Hi guys, another one of the rarer Amiga things has turned up in the mail and there isn't a YouTube video about it so I thought I'd do one and that's the CD32 debug board sold to developers for producing games. Debug board revision 2, nicknamed Downtown, is an expansion for the Amiga CD32. The idea behind all CD32 expansions is to add the CIA chips and make it a lot closer to the Amiga 1200 with most of its interface ports to make it a lot more usable. Like every other CD32 expansion, it connects via the rear card edge connector and there's an extra connector here presumably for the full motion video cartridge which slots inside the machine at the same time. The board has a footprint for a 68020 CPU. The same CPU is inside the machine, but Commodore Technical Support does state that it's for an emulator pod which plugs in and emulates the 68020. But uh, interestingly, some of these cards are populated with the real CPU, maybe because they're actually missing in the early CD32 consoles? Oh, I'm not sure. Interestingly, the CPU is populated in the schematic, and the jumper there is to send a bus request signal to the internal CPU to disable it, so... Yep, beats me. This board has unpopulated RAM footprints. Whether or not, again, they are missing from early prototype units, I'm not sure. Or expansion fast RAM, which would have to be disabled for development because you're writing for a console that doesn't actually have fast RAM. And over to the serial port, which the Amiga already had available through its auxiliary port. This one is true RS-232, however, made possible with the Max 241 serial transceiver. It's in the same family as the much more well-known Max 232, which is commonly used among the Arduino crowd. It's the same chip that would be used in accessories such as the communicator used to connect uh, the CD32 auxiliary port serial port to other Amigas, and my own homebrew one made here, which connects a CD32 to another Amiga. The debug board serial port is more comprehensive though with the request clear to send signals and other signals required to use a dial-up modem. And a parallel port, similarly to every other Amiga, the parallel port functionality is provided by the CIA chips. Complex interface adapters, basically big multiplexing chips as well as some system timers, but mainly they expand ports. And as mentioned before, they're used in almost every well-known CD32 expansion because they almost single-handedly complete the Amiga CD32 into an Amiga A1200. The debug board has an RGB video port, which it didn't really have to do anything to achieve other than lead it out to a connector, and there's also some transient protection. It's commonly known that all these video signals were present in the console anyway, and they were all available at the cartridge connector. Floppy disk drive port. Some of these pins were available at the cartridge connector and the rest are provided again by the CIA chips. And this is where things get interesting for me at least. A parallel ATA IDE drive interface. This interface is decoded with three programmable logic arrays for which we don't have the images. As soon as I got the board, I quickly made myself a stock 40 pin cable, grabbed a compact flash adapter with the operating system already on a compact flash card, and just as quickly found out that the production console's kickstart ROM doesn't support the IDE interface. As a development console, there are two ways that the system as a whole could be set up to support the IDE interface, and one of them is to have this EEPROM slot populated with an EEPROM containing the IDE driver. Well, I missed out on that eBay auction because I was quite foolish, too slow, thought about it too hard, and they all sold. Thankfully, there's another option. The developer version Kickstart ROM for the CD32 contains the IDE driver built in. So I quickly set about building an EEPROM programmer, took me a month, and wrote the developer ROM to an EEPROM. So here's the first test of the developer ROM with the debug board installed, but without the compact flash adapter installed. The message on the screen says, uh, developer ROM beta version do not distribute. Speaking of which, don't ask me for it, the answer is no. And if the question is where I got it, I'll answer that now. On a dark stormy night of a full moon in the pool room out the back of a CD bar, an ex-Commodore engineer slipped it to me under the table in a brown paper bag. 
You'll notice that the fanfare intro is uh, a little off here. Um, that's also in another video on its own. The audio is the same, the animation's different. Uh, I'm glad they didn't stick with that one. You'll also notice at this stage they hadn't prettied up the CD player and we're still using the CD TV one. Okay, the big test. The compact flash card isn't as power hungry as a hard drive, so I'm powering it from uh, power borrowed from the auxiliary port of the CD32 itself. This is in fast motion because the thing takes a very long time to boot. Um, it's a stock Workbench 3.1 installation on the compact flash card. Uh, there's a separate video with a link in the description of this in real time. It takes uh, over 2 minutes and 20 seconds from the start, so I didn't want to include it in this video in real time. When Workbench finally does show itself, you'll notice some screen flicker. I don't really see that here. It's partially the lack of synchronization when recording, and also because it's in fast motion, and the camera changing exposure when I try to refocus. So, I hope you enjoyed that little overview and demonstration. If you're wondering what happens from here, I simply become like any other collector, put it in an ESD bag, sit it on a shelf with my CD32 CD error rate counter, and let it gather dust.